الشيطان اللئيم الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي proceed with our discussions on ilm al akhlaqiyat we said that the question of ilm al akhlaqiyat has been given ample significance in the holy quran So much so that uh, no place in the Holy Quran is found whereby Almighty Allah swears uh, 11 times uh, that it has to be sweared in this particular issue pertaining to the question of self-purification. When we talk uh, pertaining to the question of self-purification, we mean we meant to say that when the question comes of self, uh, we said that the self represents the nafs here. And when the question came of uh, purification, we said it means uh, one ought to eliminate from his nafs uh, immoral uh, tendencies, immoral deviations. And then comes the process of tahliya. This particular first and foremost process, uh, which will act as a stepping stone for us to pursue the process of tahliya is tahliya. We are now entering into the final part of Takhliya, which will take us for around three classes or so, and then we will pause, uh, we will give way to others, uh, and inshallah, maybe after the holy month, uh, we will come into the question of Takhliya and delve into it at length. When comes the question of uh, self-purification, we said uh, it is of vital significance that one ought to well digest uh, the issues of uh, supervisory matters. One ought now to look into this matter very seriously as it's a question of his eternal doom or eternal salvation. So one ought to monitor his position day in and day out. Uh, and we find these ethical tools uh, found uh, in our sources. Jamil Saadat, Marhum Naraki talks about it. Uh, and likewise with other great scholars uh, in Mulakhlaqiyat. So we are now entering into that phase. Uh, but prior to that, I said uh, last time uh, that it is of vital significance that the question of uh, self-admiration uh, should not exist. Short of that, uh, it will act as a stumbling block for us to undertake these particular measures. The question of self-admiration, the question of self-love, the question of ego-centeredness would act as a deterrent measure for our self-improvement, for our self-elevation spiritually. So we ought to eliminate that particular issue and we have discussed that particular issue at a particular level. If at all you go to Khutbah Amir al-Mu'minin, alayhi salatu was salam, there is a lengthy khutbah which is even known as Khutbah Hammam. Hammam was uh, a very pious companion of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He goes to Imam Ali alayhi salam and tells to the Imam, uh, can you explain me the attributes of a pious person? Imam knew this particular person, noble as he may be, he has a very tender heart. He won't be able to digest it. So he puts it under one word, uh, Ya Hammam ittaqillah wa ahsin. Be pious uh, and be good. Inna allaha ma'alladina Inna allaha ma'alladina Inna allaha ma'alladina taqaw Walladina hum muhsinun Almighty Allah is with those people who are pious And those people who do good to others Imam Ali stops there But uh, Hammam is not satisfied This is an ayat of Surah Nahal The last verse 128 That Allah is with those people Who are good and those people who are pious Halas. Hammam is not satisfied. He tells to Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ya Ali, I want further explanation about it. 
Imam Ali is resisting in the first place, for he knew what will take place. Hammam is a person who has a tender heart, but then Hammam is joined with other companions. And they persuade Mawla to explain in details of how should a pious person live, how should a pious person think, how should a pious person go along with his social relationships, etc., etc. A masterpiece which ought to be read. In it, he comes pertaining to this particular quality, talking about a pious person, what standard is supposed to be maintaining. Right? He talks, Lahum fi anfusihim mutahimun. These pious people uh, are uh, scared about themselves. Wamin aamalihim mushfiqun. And pertaining to their deeds, uh, they are frightened. Imam is putting one of the qualities of the pious people are these people that they are scared of themselves they are blaming themselves and pertaining to their good deeds they are frightened basically it's the same point which we are trying to drive into our mind including myself that one ought not to be contented with his deeds so much so that he undergoes into that pomp and into that puff and into that pride so much so that it acts as a stumbling block uh, for undertaking the spiritual exercises which we are talking about. One ought to adopt a fair and an impartial attitude so as to come to concrete conclusions uh, for his eternal salvation. This will act as a stumbling block for him to go forward. So these are the pious people. Initially, I was intending to discuss this particular issue at length, but on giving it a further consideration, I will not move into it, uh, how one should blame himself. But just at a surface level, one ought to blame himself, as Imam Ali puts it, by this particular issue of being pessimistic towards his own self. Don't be optimistic towards one's own self. Look at oneself with a pessimistic attitude. Right? Don't overlook to your good deeds. Don't underlook to your sinful deeds. Right? When the question comes of flattery, avoid those places of flattery. These are the issues whereby you will, and I too as well, will keep in myself in a neutral and a fair stance, whereby then we can undertake things and reach to right conclusions. So much so then for those particular issues, we are now entering into the final part of it. Therefore, as I said, ulama of Akhlaq have said, we are dwelling into the first one to be succeeded with the letter per day, inshallah, so a month before we pause for our discussions. The first and the foremost issue which ought to be understood as a preamble before we enter into that first spiritual tool is that uh, one ought to well understand that if at all one goes through the Holy Quran and sees uh, the ayahs which are there related to the day of resurrection, to the day of judgment, uh, make a survey of it. Scroll towards the deeds uh, which are there pertaining to the accounting issue, masalan pertaining to the resurrection of Masalan, pertaining to putting oneself uh, to the divine court of justice. The ayahs are uh, extremely difficult. And we have said from day one that we ought to look at these things uh, with a serious angle. Right? We have come here and uh, bed with this ignorant person to understand uh, something which is of extreme significance. From day one, uh, we have been mentioning a couple of issues. If at all you are closely monitoring, uh, you will well appreciate of what we are concluding with. These issues are of pretty significance. Right? Uh, if at all one is a student of the Quran, uh, go through the verses of the day of resurrection, uh, and you will see things are going to be very difficult, especially when the question comes of Allah auditing the deeds of people. When Allah will audit the deeds of the people, it's going to be a very difficult time. Right now, a person like me is performing his deeds day in and day out, minor, minute, major, right? And uh, later on, we forget about it. Not knowing that these deeds uh, are recorded. Uh, and uh, though we have forgotten about them, uh, and they will be produced uh, on the day of judgment uh, without uh, any lapse or without any sense of forgetfulness. So much so it has been mentioned in this Quranic ayats in their tafsiri part of it. Uh, that things will reach to such a difficult state. 
Now these issues are to be discussed to the level of the heart. You see, a person has imani aqali and imani qalbi. Ulama of akhlaq have said, uh, when the question comes of digestion, uh, absorb it to the level of the qalb. We know that there are snakes and scorpions awaiting there in alam barzakh That is up to the imani aqali, yet we don't desist from sins. Right now, if at all I were to tell one, that if at all you go out, take a route, uh, which is free from wolves uh, and tigers, uh, for they will harm you. You will obviously not take that particular route. Why? Because you have understood uh, that particular part from the level of the heart, certainty. Right? But when the question comes of the tortures and the torments lying ahead, uh, prophets came one after the other, imams came one after the other, ulamas have told us in very clear, plain words, what lies in store for us yet, this is simply to the level of the aql. Iman should be absorbed to the level of uh, the heart. When it comes to the level of the heart, uh, then you will understand and you will desist from what warnings have come to us. Yet we sin, uh, and uh, including me, though knowing the facts and the realities. The issue is this. There should be understood exercises being undertaken whereby this uh, Iman should be absorbed to the level of the heart. So when it comes to the question of accounting, it will be difficult in the sense that the auditing process will be of uh, extreme difficulty. Now, so much so, Mufassirin have mentioned when they were commenting on the ayats of resurrection, they tell us that uh, there will be witnesses. The prophets will be a witness against you, either or, right? The angels will bear witness against or you, right? The limbs and the organs by which one was either doing sins, or doing good deeds will bear witness against himself. The place whereby he was doing sins or doing good deeds will bear witness against himself. Can you imagine this scenario? Will bear witness against oneself so much so that there will be so much fright and fear and people will be so much undertaken with anxiety. What will be the results? What will be the results now? Because on these results will depend our eternal doom or our eternal salvation. Are we really going to pass these exams and stay with the honorable awliyas of Allah and enjoy the qurb of Allah and enjoy those material amenities of Allah? Question. They are in a state of perplexity. Or are we going to enter into the fire, the companions of uh, the devils and the ruffians? There will be absolutely anxiety there will be fear and fright, so much so it has been mentioned pertaining to that particular scenario that that woman who was breastfeeding her child uh, will forget about it. And that woman who was bearing the Lord, the pregnancy, will drop off our Lord due to miscarriage. That is the day of judgment that is going to occur. Quran is saying about this. Right? Uh, then uh, how are we supposed to look into this particular issue? We are ought to take this matter seriously and we ought to make a sincere plan with determination and with sincerity. The devil will try to whisper into our mind uh, that uh, is it possible of what are you talking with this busy schedule of ours? Uh, but these are the devil's whisperings. It is possible it is practical, it can be accommodated in our plan. And it is necessary because this question comes of eternal salvation and eternal doom. So first step which ulamas of akhlaq have said, we are now entering to this particular issue, is uh, pertaining to the question of uh, musharata. What does it mean when we say pertaining to the question of musharata? In English, if at all you were to translate this particular word, it means... Uh, from the word shart, it means self-conditioning. A person, when he wakes up in the morning at dawn, safe and sound, it's an additional day for him to invest. He has got up safe and sound, and he should bring into consideration a couple of Quranic ayats, which are of paramount significance. This given a life, they are not things to be taken for granted. Quran in Surah Zumar, verse number 42 says, uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Allahu yatawaffal anfusahina mawtiha, 
والتي لم يموت في منامها ويمسك ويمسك الذي قضى عليها الموت ويرسل الاخرى الى اجل مسمى Almighty Allah in Surah Zumar says uh, that the soul of a person is taken out uh, during sleep and during death. I am putting this particular ayat in my own words. Allahu ya tabaffal anfusahina mautiha. When we are undergoing a sleep, uh, know that uh, that it is temporary death. The soul is taken out according to the Quranic ayat. Right, and if at all the destiny is not decided for his soul to be holded, uh, it is returning back, and we get up safe and sound the other succeeding day. If at all it has been decided to hold, it is holded, and one passes away. Now, when a person wakes up safe and sound at these fajr hours, at dawn hours, this is musharata, and he sees uh, he himself is safe and sound. Let him address to his nafs. Now, ulama of akhlaq have said that. This particular issue ought to be taken during uh, subu time when you have already dealt with your subu prayers. Uh, when the atmosphere is safe and sound, uh, one ought to undertake this exercise uh, and uh, pause and with a careful consideration ought to address that inner stuff of his that is the nafs uh, or nafs. You have been given an additional day. What would have been the case had you passed away? <laughs> Don't you think or oh, nafs? Uh, that uh, you ought to invest in this particular rational day what is our capital you know when a person has capital he invests right and that capital as uh, days goes uh, is consumed when the question of comes uh, to its understanding in the light of our discussions uh, life uh, is a capital uh, which is consumed as day passes. How is it consumed? You were stronger, now you are getting weaker. You were young and now you are getting older. So why should not we invest that capital, life of ours, in our akhirat, so that it bears fruits? Life is our capital and it ought to be invested for it is getting consumed, come what may. And we ought to invest whereby it will reap fruits in the hereafter. So one ought to address himself uh, that I've been given an additional day. Let me work to earn the pleasure of Almighty Allah. Let me work uh, to obtain the nearness of Almighty Allah. Comes the question of Muharramat's avoidance. Comes the question of performance of the obligations. Comes the question of Mustahabat and Makruhat. Day in and day out, one ought to make a condition with his nafs. Ulama then further go to discuss that imagine you were dead and you are now into that barza called. They bring into this consideration of this Surah Mu'minun, verse number 100. Rabbir ji'uni la'alli amalun salihan fi ma taraktu. One is already in alam e barza and he has seen what was supposed to be seen. The parda has been removed and the vision is now sharp. At that time, the person in that projectory world is asking God, uh, after seeing what was supposed to be seen, Oh my Lord, uh, send me back, so that I may do good. And imagine the word does not come, Kalla. You know, when Quran mentions Kalla, it says not possible. Imagine the reply is given in the affirmative, and you are told to go back, given. How is one supposed to behave? This is musharata. Ulamas of Akhla go to the extent of saying one ought to address his seven organs. The ears, the eyes, the mouth, the limbs, the feet, the stomach and the private parts. That don't you dare let me down, O nafs. For you well know that this is an additional day. What if at all you had died? How would you have placed before Almighty Allah? He ought to address each and every organ and uh, that particular organ which is more addicted to commit sins. Don't you know, Nafs, uh, that in Jahannam there are seven doors, each door allocated for a particular organ. One ought to address himself, right? Uh, that is uh, the issue pertaining to Musharata. With that then, uh, a person then goes uh, into the question of Murakema whereby now he's supposed to be careful 
pertaining to the conditions which he made to his nafs at dawn. A very important subject of Murakaba that those conditions made should not be trampled upon. Many a times the conditions are made as days goes, uh, they are being trampled upon. Inshallah, with the tawfiq of Allah, that will be discussed uh, in the succeeding lesson. May Almighty Allah help us in this uh, spiritual journey. Short of that, we will enter into the state of inattentiveness, uh, which will earn us eternal damnation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.